Hello again, sixth graders. I'm calling this video for, for this week uh, number 3A because it really goes along with number three. I stopped a little too soon, should have gone further. So here it is. We did uh, four additions. And I think the most important thing for you to do in coming to terms with adding integers is to think of uh, two situations, adding where the two signs are the same, and then adding where you have different signs. And there are some formal rules that we can state that you can find in some of the textbooks. I'm going to articulate those rules that way, but it really doesn't change anything that you already know. Uh, I think uh, you should all have a pretty good concept uh, in your mind of how these additions work, so don't let the words throw you off. All right, how do we add two numbers that have the same signs? The rule is we add their absolute values the way we always have, but then the answer will have the sign that the two original numbers both had. Now, with 5 plus 2 is 7, and you probably don't think you need any explanation for that, but the absolute value of 5 is 5, the absolute value of 2 is 2. We add the two absolute values, 5 plus 2. We give the sum or the answer the same sign that the two numbers had. So it's positive 7. When we had negative 5 and negative 2, and again, this, this is the rule for when the signs are the same for the two numbers. Negative 5 plus negative 2. Add their absolute values. The absolute value of negative 5 is 5. The absolute value of negative 2 is 2. Add 5 and 2, but then give the sum the sign that the two original numbers had. So rather than 7, the sum is negative 7. And notice the symbolism that I wrote here. Negative 5 plus negative 2 equals the opposite of 5 plus 2. Do the 5 plus 2, but then make it negative. Okay? Now, these rules correspond with what the vectors are doing. When we did 5 plus 2 is 7, we, we were 5 to the right, and then we were 2 more to the right. That's why we added 5 and 2. And, of course, we ended up at positive 7, the same sign of the original two numbers. With negative 5 plus negative 2, negative 5 is a vector pointing left by 5. The negative 2 goes 2 more to the left. So that's why we added 5 and 2. But, of course, we ended up at negative 7, so we took the sign that the two original numbers had, negative, okay? When the signs are different. 5 plus negative 2 or negative 5 plus 2. In either case, the signs are different. Here's the rule. Subtract the absolute values the way you would have in first grade. The absolute value of 5 is 5. The absolute value of negative 2 is 2. You do 5 minus 2, and then the sum will have the same sign as the number with the higher absolute value. In this case, 5 has a higher absolute value than negative 2. The 5 is positive, so the answer is positive. And by the way, after writing 5 plus negative 2, I wrote 5 minus 2. Well, there's two things to say about that. First of all, that's what you have to do mentally to get to the result. But also, these two things are equivalent. I said in the previous video, we're not really doing subtraction, but this is sort of a spoiler right here. We're going to define adding negative 2 as subtracting 2. Our definition of subtraction, which we will formally cover in a, in a future video, our definition of subtraction will be to subtract a number, you add its opposite. So to subtract 2, you add negative 2. Okay, we'll leave that there for now. But what about negative 5 plus 2? The signs are different. One is negative, one is positive. So we're going to take the two absolute values and subtract the way we would as a first grader. The absolute value of negative 5 is 5. The absolute value of 2 is 2. We're going to do 5 minus 2. But this time the answer will not be 3. It'll be negative 3 because the number with the higher absolute value this time is negative. So the answer is negative. The absolute value of negative 5 is 5. The absolute value of 2 is only 2. So the answer 
has the same sign as the negative five because of that higher absolute value. And notice again, the symbolism, notice that I wrote for negative five plus two in parentheses, I wrote five minus two. You have to do that mentally, but then you have to realize to make that negative, I put the minus sign in front of the five minus two so that the answer comes out to be negative three. And as far as the vectors are concerned, um, this should correspond in your mind with those vectors. You know, the five, positive five went that way. And the negative two started there and came back. So you're doing five minus two to get to the three. And why is it positive three? Because five had a higher absolute value. So when you come back to the left by two, you don't reach zero. You're at positive three. The other one is, is the opposite situation. You've got negative five plus two. So there's the vector for the negative five. The negative five has a higher absolute value than the two. So when you put the two vector here and come back to the right by two, you're not gonna reach zero because the negative five has the higher absolute value than the two. So your answer is negative three. It all makes sense. Keep with it until it makes sense when the practice comes. Reach a level of proficiency. Get to the point where it's automatic. Adding integers is not difficult. Please refer back to this theory when needed and then work toward becoming really good at it. Just like you did when you were in first grade, eventually you became very good at doing five plus two. All the others will fall into place. That's all for now. I will see you on YouTube, and I will see you again in person soon. Keep the faith. Stay well. Bye-bye for now.